All right, so here's why I think the whole funding challenges and retail prop firms, if you even want to call them that, here's why I think they're pretty stupid. Most people are not going to make money doing it. So let's take a look at the actual statistics. The statistics are, depending on where you look, anywhere from 10 to 30% of people are profitable trading. Okay, so Forex.com, for example, reports to regulatory authorities that roughly 70% of their traders lose money and 30% of their traders who have accounts with them make money. 30% profitability. Other metrics, depending on where you look, will say only 20% of people are profitable, only 10% of people are profitable, but it's roughly anywhere from 10 to 30% of people get profitable. So let's take this. If, you t if, we, if we average those out and we say, let's just say it's 20%, we go right in the middle, say it's 20% of people get profitable. If we use that metric, that means that one out of every five people are going to get profitable trading. Okay. Now, let's look at the metrics for actual prop firm challenges, funding accounts. They're not even, they're not even live accounts. It's, just, it's, it's all demo accounts. It's all stupid. A lot of these retail prop firms disclose this on their websites that you're actually just legit trading a demo account because they've come over a lot of scrutiny here over the past few years since they started to become more popular. And I'm not coming after any single company in particular. I'm not coming after any specific funding challenge prop firm thing or whatever the hell you want to call it. I'm saying the industry as a whole, you're more likely to lose money if you try to trade with one of these prop firm challenge things. <laughs> I'm going to call it like five different things throughout this video. And here's why. So I talked to somebody from a liquidity provider and, and a facilitator that manages a bunch of different prop firms like to where they can help people white label and create their own prop firms. It's a company that comes to people and says, hey, you have a big audience like me. And they say, hey, we would like you to create a white label prop firm, like a little challenge funding firm or whatever. And you get people to sign up. And then, um, yeah, we'd like you to do that. So I talked to this guy. He was a really cool guy. I'm not going to give away the name of the company that was facilitating this. It was just kind of like a discovery call I did with for like an hour with him. And this was like last year. He was a really cool guy, but I'm still against the industry. But, you know, that's all beside the point. So we talked and I asked him to tell me some of the metrics. So here's what, here's what he told me. And I'm paraphrasing here going off the top of my head. Y'all can look up these statistics if you can even find them on the internet because they're so obscure and hard to find. But I've seen this, I'm hearing this from this person as well as seeing it firsthand from a lot of my clients who try to use these prop firm things. Here's what he said. 80% of people fail the first challenge. So you start an account, you buy the little challenge thing for whatever it is, and you try to, uh, to profit. So 80% of people just completely fuck that up and fail it. All right. So you're left with 20%. Of those 20%, 80% of people will fail that second little verification phase thing because some of them may have one phase that you pass that, then you have a verification thing where you have to make another profit, and then there's like a third thing where you'll get an account, and they're all structured differently, so this is just with this specific one that he was telling me about. So 80% of people will fail that second phase. So now you've got 80% of people failed the first one. Of the 20% that was left, 80% of people fail that one, okay? So now, let's wind it forward. Of the people who actually continue past that if you can somehow make it that far, you're 80, not, it's, 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 it's anywhere between 7 and 60 or something like that. But it's like roughly 60 to 80% of people, depending on which firm you look at specifically, will not actually receive a payout. They'll do something and they won't trade profitably and they'll fail everything. And so then what you're left with is the people that receive payouts is like 1 in 100 people, okay? But a very interesting thing is just because you receive a payout, does not mean that you're going to get to keep that payout for very long because most people who do these funding firms and receive payouts have purchased multiple accounts to try to do this with and failed multiple account challenges. Some people do this one or two times. Some people I've seen people do this five, six, seven times before they finally get funded and receive a payout. Of the people who start from the very beginning and go all the way to the end to actually get a payout, it's, it's like 0.25% of people in, in, in all general, so like 0.25% of people actually make more in their payouts than what they paid for in funding challenges. So let's look at the metrics here real quick. And again, I'm paraphrasing from all this and my source is just this guy who told me this. There's no way for you to cross check this because I'm not going to say the name of the company or the person because I don't, I don't want anyone fucking suing me over this. I'm just, it's just my, my opinion as a whole in the whole industry, not just this one company. And then of course, seeing this from in person, I, I know literally, I know personally one person who has received a payout multiple payouts that that are more than whatever it is that he paid for in challenges. His name is Andre Chelaru. He's one of my clients. He's in the, the the compounding course, Mission FX compounding course. 
And uh, he's doing good, but he's like literally the only person that I know who has made more in payouts than what he's paid for in funding fees. So outside of that, I know no one else and I know hundreds of people who have done this. So this means that your chances of actually receiving a payout are one in 400 if that payout exceeds the total amount you paid for in challenges. One in 400, that's about a 0.25%. So let's do a little bit of math here, all right? Let's say we take the most abysmal shitty statistics that we can possibly find, which is the fact that 10% of people are gonna be profitable trading, right? It's probably closer to 20 or 30, but let's just use the worst metrics here. So like roughly like 10%. If we say, okay, there's 10% there, instead let's take the, whatever it is, the 0.25% of people that are gonna make more money in funding firm payouts than they actually paid for in challenges. What this means is that you are 50 times more likely to just start your own damn account and just trade normally how you would, and then make a profit. You're 50 times more likely to do it on your own than you would be if you did it with a funding platform. 50 times more likely. Even if it's not that much, it sure as fuck is not a very high amount. Even if I'm like 0.25%, maybe it's like 0.5%, or maybe, God forbid, it's even lower than that. Who knows, right? But you're, you're way more likely to trade on your own, is what I'm saying, as compared to a funding, a funding challenge. Another thing, because I have a lot of qualms with these, another thing, they have daily drawdown limits. So let's say you get 100K funded, and you're so happy because you got $100,000 you can trade with, and that's your money to trade with, right? Wrong. It's not all your money to trade with because a lot of these firms have like a certain percentage of daily drawdown limits. A common one is 5%. You get a 5% daily drawdown limit. So let's just do the math here. You have $100,000, but if you exceed the equity drawdown of 5%, that's only 5K. As soon as you hit that, no matter which phase of the verification you're on, a lot of them, it's like roughly similar, you're, you're going to lose the challenge or you're going to lose the verification or you're going to lose the actual account if you've somehow made it past the challenge and verification. This is absolutely insane because you, are no, you do not have a $100,000 account to trade with. You have a $5,000 account to trade with because if you cross that $5,000 equity limit, then you lose the account. So it's pretty much, it will be the same damn thing if you did a 100K challenge with the 5K like drawdown limit, it's the same exact shit if you just started a $5,000 account and just risked the whole account to try to make a profit. So you tried to, you just went really high risk and just tried to double the 5K account, withdraw, double it again, withdraw, double it again, and you know, it'd be the same thing. But wait, there's more. You thought that was crazy. It's not even that way because here's why. A lot of these funding firms, they've got all these ridiculous criteria that you have to follow. You can and can be in trades with certain time periods. Sometimes you have to close them for the weekend. Sometimes you can't trade before a news event. Sometimes you can't trade certain assets in certain ways. Sometimes they'll just do a manual review of your account and just out of discretion, pure arbitrary, they pull it out of their ass and they'll say, oh, your system is not working with us and so we're gonna discontinue your account and we'll give you one payout but we're not giving you any more after that. Sometimes they just won't even give you a payout at all. But they'll make it a huge pain in the ass and put up a fight to pay you because you can't even trade normally. They have all these weird criteria and this long freaking contract they'll send you that says that you can and can't trade certain ways. It's absolutely ridiculous. So here's what the, here's what the actual thing is. Your stats of making money, there are more in payouts than there is um, the amount you paid in funding fees or whatever. It's, it's like 0.25%. Even if we just round it up and say it's 1%, one in 100. If we just look at the lowest, most abysmal metrics for profitability, which is 10%, if we just take that as a rule of thumb, that is 10%, and like I said, it's more likely 20 or 30, but if we just take 10%, if it's one in 100, which is 1% for you doing it profitably with a funding firm, you are 10 times more likely at a 10% success rate to do it if you just did it with your own money. So whether you're, you're 10 times more likely to do it with your own money or whether you're 50 times more likely to do it, depending on what your metrics are, that's like 40 times or 50 times more likely to do it on your own. Depending on what the metrics are, you are objectively more likely to make money if you just did it on your own. On top of that, you can actually trade normally. Wouldn't that be crazy if you could just start your own account and just trade however the fuck you want? You can't do that with funding firms. And then on top of that, it gives you the illusion that you're managing, you're, you're a prop firm. Here, let me flex my muscles here. You're, you're trading on a prop firm, brother, and you know, you've know you got all this funding and everything's good, but no, 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 you actually don't. Even on $200,000 of funding, if you have a 5% daily drawdown limit, you only got 10K to trade with. Why not just start a 5K or a 10K account and just trade at really high risk? I mean, if you're gonna do that, why not just start a smaller account and just do that, right? The fact that I see people losing their asses, meaning money, over and over and over again with these stupid funding challenges drives me insane. 
I myself have tried to do this site, I think it's three or four times, I think it's three times, I've tried to do this three times, I've failed. Two of the first times I actually ended in profit, but I didn't meet the profit target, so I wasn't eligible to proceed to the next thing, and then I just said fuck it and quit. It was one time in 2020, and it was two times last year I tried to do it. And the other two times, one of them I, I well, like I said, two times I like got into profit, but I didn't meet the profit target, and then one time I just straight up failed it. I just... I, I hit the drawdown limit because it's stupid because there are routine times where I will start like a 50k account to grow it to 100k. There's routine times I'll be in like 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50% drawdown on the account to grow it. Fortunately for me, 50% or $50,000 is a small amount of my trading capital. It's still a good amount of money and I don't want to lose it. But even if I blow the entire 50k account or lose half of the 50k account, the account's left at like 25k or 20k, it's still a super microscopic amount of my capital so I never sweat it because I don't I don't put all of my money in one account. You don't need to. In FX, you've got high leverage. So just like start an account that's like a basic amount for how much you'll need and then you can just risk however much dollar amounts you want. There's no difference between starting a $1 million account and risking $1,000 per trade versus just putting 50K into the account using the high leverage and still risking 1K per trade. The only upside is now you can keep $950,000 in your bank account and you keep only 50K with your broker in case they like get sketchy or up and leave if they're a degenerate unregulated broker, you know, if, if, even if they just disappear. But you got 95% of your trading capital and you can split it all up among different brokerages. It just makes so much more sense to trade with your own capital. So for all these reasons, this is why I think that these funding challenge verification demo account firms are really, really stupid and ridiculous. So not financial advice, but I wouldn't suggest personally using anything like that. I would suggest getting experience trading, creating your own trading approach, getting profitable, learning the nuances, getting experience, getting that little bit of an element of intuition that helps you in your trading and decide what the best decisions are given the context of the trading opportunity and just trade normally with your own capital. I think you're more likely to make money trading your own capital with a $100 account versus a funding firm with $100,000 in it. Isn't that freaking insane? You're more likely to make money with $100 of your own capital than you are to trade with a $100,000 verification account. Everything I've said in this video is just my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not licensed. I don't do any of that shit. I'm just some bald dude who trades for himself and then shares all the shit that I've learned and all my opinions here on the internet. Those are my thoughts about funding firms. Good luck in trading. And I hope that you just do it on your own because <laughs> you're more likely to make money. Cheers.